Hello everyone, Data Engineer One here, and welcome back to Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's video, we're going to be investigating a, a Kedro pipeline more closely. We're going to be using Kedro Viz in order to take a look at a pipeline, and then we're going to actually investigate each of the nodes and the pipeline itself to see what it's doing. And this is, again, the example pipeline. And if you guys want to follow along, make sure to take a copy of ASCII Cinema installed on your machine. If you're using Mac, you can use brew install ASCII Cinema. And go ahead and install that. Uh, the last video is already up. You can actually even use ASCII Cinema in order to play the previous video. Now, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and start ASCII Cinema recording, and we'll be able to play this video um, for you later on. So first on the list is Kedro Viz. So Kedro Viz is a, is a package that was made by Quantum Black that allows you to visualize your pipelines. You can actually do a pip install Kedro Viz in order to install it, and then you run it by just typing in Kedro Viz inside of your Kedro pipeline. So right here, we're already inside of an introduction to Kedro. We just type in Kedro Viz and hit enter. I already have the pipeline open up, so I'm just going to switch over to it. And you can see right here, this is the Kedro Viz pipeline. Now, what we visualized here is the actual pipeline for your example data set. And it actually comes with all of the different portions, all the different nodes, as you can see here. So it starts off right here on the very top with these data sets of this example iris data and then the parameters of example test data ratio. These two pieces of data go into a node function here. So right here, this is a node function. That's why we got little gears. And this is the split data function. That split data function then outputs four new data sets. It, it exports an example x training data set, an example test X data set, example train Y data set, and then an example test Y data set. So these four data sets are then output and then passed through the system again. So right here, we are doing another train model uh, transformation function, which outputs the example model, which we then use to uh, test against the example test data in order to check our predictions. Then we output our predictions and then see how closely our predictions are when compared to the predictions, or rather the test data that we had already split from before. And this comes back into this final node called report accuracy, which outputs to the standard out the accuracy of our model. So again, this is just a very simple model pipeline. This is what a lot of models do. We're splitting the data up from our original data. We're then using half of the data to do our training on the data. And then the other half we reserve for testing. And then we do our model, we create the predictions, and then we see exactly how closely our own predictions match the example. So what are we training? What are we predicting? Let's take a look. Going back over here to our introduction to Kedro, we can see if we go into our source and if we go into our introduction to Kedro, then we go down into our pipelines. And you can see here that in the main pipeline, it only shows, again, the data engineering pipeline and the data science pipeline. Um, these two together are formed, or rather, are combined together to create the default pipeline. So this is the pipeline that Kedro Viz actually is uh, visualizing for us. So right here in this visualization, this is the default pipeline, which is right here. So that's actually a combination of the data engineering pipeline and the data science pipeline. So we already took a look at the data engineering pipeline in the last video. Let's go ahead and look at it one more time in comparison to the Kedro Viz. So going to Pipelines Data Engineering, and then we go to Pipeline here, we can see the example iris data, which is the data set, and then the parameters, which is a parameter, comes in as the input to the split data, and then the outputs are the four following. 
Now the split data function itself actually does contain a collection, or rather it does contain a, um, an output that is a dictionary. So the dictionary output here that's inside of the node corresponds to the key values that are coming out of the function itself. So if we actually take a look at that function that's under pipelines slash data engineering slash notes. And we can see here on the very bottom, this dictionary train X, train Y corresponds directly to this one right here, train X, train Y. And now what we're doing is we're just extracting the dictionary keys and then turning those keys into values. And those values correspond to the names of the data sets that we're outputting. So you can see here this split data, again, is creating example train X, example train Y, example test X, example test Y, example train X, Y, test X, test Y. Very straightforward. So now if we take a look at the data sciencing pipeline, pipelines, data science pipeline. We can take a look at a pipeline that we also have not looked at before. So here we're training the model and we're doing the predictions. And again, the first, the, the first parameter right after the function is the inputs. And then the second parameter is the outputs. Inputs, outputs. Right? Easy. Same thing over here for this report accuracy. Inputs. And actually, it's interesting if you notice there is no output for report accuracy. That's because the report accuracy function only prints to standard out. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, the train model does correspond over here to this train model. It takes in example X and a whole bunch of parameters and example train Y as its input right here, train X, train Y. And if you recall, those are the dictionary outputs from the split function. It'll then output an example model, which becomes the input of the predict function here. We say model is equal to example model, and then the test X is equal to the example test X. And the reason why we are using a dictionary in this case is just to parameterize the values to match the names of the, of the parameters in the function itself. So if we take a look at the nodes that are associated with this pipeline, we go to pipelines, data science, nodes.py. And so if we can take a look right here, we can see we have train model as the first function. And so we're taking, again, the example train X and the train Y and the parameters. Now, if you recall from the previous video, the parameters are coming from a parameters file that's located inside of the configuration. So base parameter configurations. And when we pass in parameters as a keyword, we're actually passing in all of these parameters from the YAML file. And they come into the function as a dictionary with strings as the keys and the values as the values. And so here we're extracting from that parameter dictionary, the example num train iter, as well as the ex example learning rate, which come right here, example num train iter, and then that example learning rate. So here, well, this is just a training function, which will train the model to predict um, whatever we're trying to predict here. Uh, it says hit right here. It'll just do the training and will do a multi-class logistics regression model. Very, 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 very simple stuff. Um, then as we're going through the prediction, um, as I said before, the dictionary down here, uh, as, the, as well as the test X just corresponds, um, sorry, the dictionary with the model and test X just corresponds to the name parameters of this predict. This is actually just an optional thing that you could do. You don't necessarily have to do it. And then our output is just this a numpy array, um, or rather the numpy argmax, which is then fed into the report accuracy, which takes the example predictions and example test Y. So here are our predictions and test Y. We go through, and the only thing that we do is we just check the accuracy and output that to standard out. 
So that's it. Very straightforward. The pipeline runs through all these guys and it's very clear. So that's the real key here is that it's very clear exactly which data comes from where, where is the data going, how is it getting transformed, and then where it ends up. And so that's one of, again, the biggest benefits of Kedro. So we can actually close out of all this and let's go ahead and run the pipeline. So we do Kedro run to run our pipeline. And using this, we should be able to get our output for our model predictions. Now, if you look very closely with the logs, the logs will match up exactly with what is said inside of the visualization. And I apologize, we're actually supposed to run Kedro run from the source root folder. So here it is. And voila, right here at the very end, model accuracy in the test set, 100%. Our model is awesome. That's what that means. So looking here, it just shows a log of how we're reading from the example iris data set, the, from the example params, basically just a log file going through each of these steps. Okay, well, that's it for today's video. I encourage you guys to go ahead and try your own Kedro run um, by using your own Kedro pipeline. And in the next video, we'll start to take a look more closely on how we can write nodes as well as uh, write pipelines. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.